Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm not outside my door today, but I'm inside my door. And I'd like to begin this episode by asking, have you ever seen a wasp inside your house, maybe on a west-facing sunny window, in the middle of winter indoors, and ask yourself, it's winter, where did this wasp come from? In addition to the stink bugs and Asian lady beetles that I've done some episodes on, I also have wasps entering my house. So today's episode is going to be about the wasps that you'll likely to find in your house in the wintertime. It's most likely a paper wasp. In this episode, I'll show you how to distinguish this wasp from other similar looking wasps. I'll also explain a little bit about the life history so you can understand why these wasps are showing up in your house in the wintertime. And there's always a fly swatter, but I'm gonna show you two ways I use to remove wasps from the inside of my house and release them outdoors. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So I'd like to begin this episode with distinguishing wasps from bees, when they're commonly confused. Wasps tend to have longer, slimmer bodies with shiny exoskeletons, long legs, and a very defined waist. Bees tend to be stouter, don't have that defined waist, and have hairs on them. Wasps will feed on insects for their protein sources and nectar, while bees will feed primarily on nectar and pollen collected from flowers. The umbrella wasps or paper wasps or polistinae tend to have slimmer bodies and longer legs and a very defined waist. And when they fly, they kind of trail those legs in the air. It's very distinctive. So the confusing part of this is while the paper wasps, the hornets and the yellow jackets all build paper nests, only the first group is known as the paper wasps. Hornets will build nests up off the ground, hanging from a tree under under the eave or under a carport or under a roof line, while the yellow jackets tend to build their nests underground or inside cavities, sometimes inside human structure. The hornets have stout bodies, and the common hornet in our area is the bald face hornet, which has a white face and a dark black body. The yellow jackets, of course, have the distinctive yellow and black banding and have smaller, stouter bodies. Both the hornets and the yellow jackets can have colonies numbering in thousands of individuals, while the paper wasps are numbered in the dozens, maybe 12 to 30 in an average nest. Yellow jackets are primarily ground nesters. Yellow jackets are known to fiercely defend their nests, and they often interact with humans as their diet shifts from insects in the fall to primarily sugars. This is a yellow jacket's nest that I found after freezing temperatures had arrived, so it was unoccupied, and it was inside a dead tree that I was cutting down for firewood. And I found these seven layers of cells in this nesting colony. All three species, the paper wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets, scrape wood off of decks and buildings and use it to chew up and produce this paper-like substance that they build their nests with. So with this background, let's get to the main question. Who are these wasps in my house? Well, they're most likely paper wasps. It's most likely you're gonna see paper wasps in your house in the middle of winter. But to understand why, you have to understand their life cycle. So let's start with a brief life history explanation, starting with the queens that emerge in the spring, carrying sperm that they picked up when mating with males in the fall. So the queen will begin by laying a single egg in the first cell it produced. That egg will hatch and the queen will feed the larva by gathering insects that it has killed and chewed up and regurgitated to feed the larva. As this larva grows, it will eventually reach the size 
ready for pupation and complete metamorphosis. It will spin a silken hatch over the top of the cell, like these ones right here, and pupate inside. When it has finished undergoing complete metamorphosis, it will cut a hole in the silk layer and emerge as a worker wasp. These non-reproductive female worker wasps have the ability to sting and they'll go out and collect insect food to help the queen and communally they'll feed larvae, build new cells, and expand the colony to 20 or 30 individuals by fall. In the fall, the queen will lay drone eggs and queen eggs, which will develop into male drones that do not sting because they lack the ovipositor that the females have, and queens that are able to mate. The queens have specially adapted with an antifreeze in their blood system, fat deposits, and the adaptive behavior to find a shelter place to overwinter. The drones and all the other worker wasps will die in the winter time, leaving only the queens. So the queens will go look for crevices and places to hide and be sheltered from freezing temperatures. Very often, this is under the eaves or walls of a person's house. And once they're hibernated in there, they'll sometimes be drawn into the warm interior, especially on warm, sunny days. We've had freezing temperatures and snow here for the last month and a half. But yesterday, the temperature reached almost 60 degrees, and sure enough, out emerged two different wasps during the day. So for my channel, and just out of interest, I've been keeping these emerged queens over the winter, and I started collecting them back in December, and I've placed them in this do-it-yourself bug container. Check out my episode for how to make one. And I've been keeping them alive on pieces of fresh apple, pieces of citrus fruit, and an occasional little piece of raw meat for protein to replace the insects that they normally would be feeding on. And my plan is to use them to photograph this episode and to release them outdoors in the springtime. So if you have wasps that show up in the middle of the winter inside your house, especially on a sunny, warm day, take a close look at them and see if they're not these paper wasps. So if they're the paper wasps, you can be assured that there's not a giant colony in the walls of your house. And what you found is a few of these wayward queens that are thinking it's springtime and looking to escape from their hibernating crevice. You can easily get a fly swatter and take care of them. Or if you want to release them unharmed, you can use one of the following procedures that I do. The first one is to use a glass and a piece of cardboard, cover the wasp with the glass, slide the piece of cardboard underneath, and there you've got them. And you can take them outside to fend for themselves. Or you can use a bug zooka. And I've enjoyed using my bug zooka to collect insects that I think might sting me for photography, as well as for my Black Widow episode. I used this to move the Black Widow from place to place to do some filming before I release them back in the woods far away from my house. So if you find a vagrant wasp on a sunny window in your house in the middle of winter, it's most likely a paper wasp. It could be one of the European paper wasps that have been recently introduced to this country and are fast becoming the most common paper wasp in many states in the United States. And they have the paper wasp slim build, but have, rather than black and red, they have black and yellow markings similar to a yellow jacket. Well, I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of Nature at Your Door, learning a little bit about how to distinguish the different wasp species and a wasp species that you might find in your house. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.